Um, so yeah, I just got into podcasting and then, um, I just kind of kept up with it. It's, it's, it's fun. I enjoy talking to people. And like I said, when I follow people on Instagram, it's kind of weird because you, you do follow somebody and you're paying attention to, you know, highs and lows. Um, and you kind of just wonder like, you know, is it always like that? Um, what kind of life do they live? You know, are they really all about jujitsu their whole life? Do they have a backstory? How did they get into jujitsu? Is it a family thing? Is it a occupational thing? You know, huh. there's just so much that I wonder about people sometimes. And then so I was like, oh, I'll just start talking to these people. I'm sure they'll be up for talking. And then again, I talk to my friends as well, um, who are comedians. Um, you're more than free to ask me questions. It's not just like me asking you questions. If you just want to like, hey, this, we can talk about that too. All right, so uh, we'll start the podcast. Um, can you tell me like your real name and then also your nickname and how that came to be? Yes, I can. <laughs> so my real name is Catherine. Um, I have a few different nicknames. Uh, so my name, I think on Instagram is look and then my handle is Lachata. And then in jujitsu, people call me Kaka. So, uh, the reason I'm called, so I'm Catherine, but uh, when I was in, so I was in rehab uh, about 10 years ago. And when I was there, I had a therapist and she was like, listen, your personality sucks. Cause it honestly really did back then. You know, I was very dark, very like hated everything, hated myself. And she was like, since I like acting, she was like, well, you should uh, have like a alter ego. And so she was like, well, what's your middle name? And I was like, Rebecca. And she's like, okay, we're going to call it Rebecca. And I was like, no, I do not like that name. And so she was like, well, pick a name. So I picked La Catherine. And that came from uh, like way back in the day when like YouTube was first like being like a thing and people were making like videos. Mm -hmm. There was this uh, girl that I, that I saw in her, her name, Sarah Highland. You maybe you've heard of her. She actually is in LA right now, but she made this uh, video on YouTube and her, and like the whole thing was like, she's like, you know, I wonder if my life would be a lot different if like I put an LA in front of my name. And so like people would be like, Hey girl, what's your name? And I'd be like, La Sarah. So it, it's just like a funny video. I can send it to you. But, uh, so I remember like when my therapist asked me, I was like, well, I'm going to put an LA in front of my name. So then I became La Catherine and then just through, uh, that I was La Catherine. And then my handle on Instagram is La Chopsticks. And that came from my Actually, my sponsor at the time, her dad, he's from China, and I forget what we were talking about, and he was visiting, and he just was like, oh, your legs are like chopsticks. And so then my handle, because I think that was when I was first making an Instagram, so it became the chopsticks. Uh, but nobody really calls me that except for he used to. He just said my legs looked like chopsticks, and I was like, all right, and then I stuck. And then uh, in jujitsu. I feel like jujitsu people, especially like if it's like an American, like they love to give nicknames to people. So uh, I guess Kaka is like a, sh a name for Catherine, like a short for Catherine. So now I'm called Kaka in the jujitsu community. So <laughs> there's my name. That's funny. Well, Kaka, I'm not sure the shortness. So, like, are, 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 so are you Hispanic? No, I'm very white. Okay, so that was... Have that was one thing that I was wondering when I saw your name. I was like, La Chopsticks. And I was actually talking about it to someone else. And I was, I was wondering, because I, I was talking about doing the interview with you. And I was like, I wonder if she's Hispanic, because it's like La Chopsticks. So I was like, so I wonder if that's something, or maybe someone nicknamed her who she knew was Hispanic, or someone Hispanic nicknamed her, because I think you said people like to give nicknames in Jiu Jitsu. So like Hispanics love giving people nicknames. And so when I uh -huh. saw you and I saw the nickname, the handle, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, La Chopsticks. She goes, because she's thin. It just kind of made sense, but it was just a nickname that someone gave you as well for the same reason, pretty much. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't, it, I don't even think it really, nobody calls me chopsticks or anything like that. It's more the, it was just like a moment in time that happened. And I was like, oh, I was creating Instagram. So I just put, I kept the LA because of, that was kind of like my sober personality that like started to become, you know? So I just put the law in front of the chopsticks and. Uh, oh, Okay. See, I thought it was just like, I thought you were Hispanic and I thought you were just putting a lot of chopsticks, like oh, no. Spanish a lot. <laughs> no, but I like it. I like that uh, kind of creating a, a different like vibe for yourself, you know, because that actually like, 
I remember when my therapist did that, like, I was just kind of like, this is stupid. Like, why are you making me like have a different name? But it, it kind of worked like in the end, like, you know, I started to open up more and I started to become, I started to like let my kind of weirdness, cause I'm a very like weird person, you know, I kind of let that kind of just become its own thing and just kind of like owned it, you know? So it was, so yeah, but I'll send you on, uh, on Instagram, the video that I got inspired from, which actually is cool because so many years later, uh, I followed this person on Instagram and we ended up like kind of becoming friends, which was cool because I think I made a post. She like made a post that was like, it's been X amount of years since the Lacera video and commented on it. And I was like, do you know this video like changed my life literally? Like, and I was like, I got sober because I put the LA in front of my name. And so she responded and then we kind of like built like a little like online relationship, like just friends, you know? So it was cool. I was like, oh wow. Like, yeah, that's, that's amazing. And then, um, how did you get into jujitsu? Cause that's kind of how I follow you. I, I usually get into something and the first thing I do is I just try to like get a hold of the people who do it. And some people, uh -huh. obviously there's a lot of people who do jujitsu, but I think there's people who have more fun with jujitsu, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm not, I'm not trying to win a tournament. I'm not even, mm -hmm. I'm hoping to never even have to ever use it, you know, other than maybe some play fighting or something, you know, and some roles. I just want to have fun with it. And so I think I, I came across a few people who I started following just because they came up when I was like scrolling and then I was like, I'll follow, follow. And then over time, you know, there's people who I'm like, I'm not so interested in what they're going doing. And then all oh, these people are continue to be interesting and I'll continue to watch. How did you, how did you get into jujitsu? So, um, I want to say I've been doing jujitsu now. I think I'm going on six years. I started in 2017. I think so. If the math is correct, I think that's six years. But uh, so before that, I was I started working at, like once I got sober, I started working out um, at the gym. And at the gym that I was at, there was this uh, big, huge German man who taught. Uh, it was called Ishin. It was this like kind of karate. It was kind of like a mixed martial arts. Like it was boxing, karate. Like it came from Eastern eastern germany like he was taught by this russian man so it was just like this whatever and he invited me to the class and so i started training with him so when i was in the first rehab that i went to i met this woman and we became friends on uh facebook like years later and i remember i would see her post pictures of herself in a gi and mm -hmm. then i was doing this other part and then one day we went to a mutual friends uh, event she was like an exotic pet owner and she was doing like a show with all her pets and I was there and I ran into this person and I was like, oh my God, hey, how are you? Like, and then I was like, hey, I see you do stuff in a gi, like what martial art do you do? And then she mentioned jujitsu and she invited me. And so then I went uh, one day and saw like her, like went to the training to the class and I like fell in love with it. And the German guy, he ended up becoming like a corrections officer. So he stopped teaching uh, what he was teaching. And then since then I've just stuck with jujitsu. It was kind of like love at first sight, I guess you could say, because it was like, oh, my God, this is like the coolest thing ever. Like, and I really like from the beginning, like I was like hooked, you know, like I was training twice a day, every day. Like I was trying to go to all the classes, like 7 a.m., 12, 6 p.m. Like I was just trying to get as much of it as possible, you know, and so I think that's kind of how... I got good at it, you know, it was because I practiced a lot, especially in the beginning. I mean, even till today, I still train twice a day, you know, like it's just something that I got hooked to, you know? You fell in love with jujitsu. What about jujitsu did you fall in love with? I think for the first time, I found something that was mine, you know, like nobody, uh, like it wasn't something my parents forced me to do growing up. It wasn't something that, you know, I had to do. It was something I found for myself. Mm -hmm. And also like grow, I was like, I always thought of myself as very like weak and like, I was always, so I was always picked last for sports, right? So there's always going to be just one kid that has that title, you know, and that was me. I was always picked last. Like nobody wanted me on their team, you know, like I tried to play soccer because my cousin was really into soccer and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I remember just being made fun of, you know, so I was like, I never thought of myself as like an athletic person or somebody that was like capable of being strong, you know? So for like the first time I feel strong and feel capable, like, you know, so it just... 
it empowered me, you know, and it really like today I can walk across the street and not feel scared about anything, you know, because I know how to defend myself. I know how to use my body. And I think that's what I love about jujitsu is we can be all shapes and sizes and ages and it doesn't matter, but you can create your own style and your own game, you know, and I really love that about it. So I think it was, yeah, just the first time that I was able to find something for myself that was like, wow, this is like mine and I can make it mine and it can help me to feel, you know, good about myself. For myself, it's been not really something, I, I, everybody always has their reasons of why they fall in love with jujitsu. Um, some people um, learn things from jujitsu and they apply it to their life. So, you know, being disciplined, that there's um, levels to understanding of everything. So, you know, there's the levels of the belts, but there's also levels of like sometimes you see someone who's good at jujitsu and you're like, oh, I wish I, if I had a body type like that, I would be a better, you know, football player. I'd be a better basketball player. But jujitsu teaches you that that if you change your mindset of, of not trying to have these attributes or rather understanding your attributes and how they play with other people's attributes, it, it's more like chess and, and people, people I, I've noticed that when people talk mm -hmm. about it, that's what they enjoy about it, that they're really using their mind they're they're able to to use their body to their advantage and then you can apply that to your you know your job you know maybe you're not the the cheery person you know that everybody likes but you're the you're the person that gets shit done you know so you're just got to find your advantages and, and and play with that i mostly just go for yeah. when i feel out of shape I think... if i feel out of shape then i usually go yeah <laughs> Jiu -jitsu, like so i always say like if i were to describe like me and the things that i like my top teeth top three things are I'm in recovery. So I do, I'm a part of Alcoholics Anonymous, even though it's anonymous, I tell everybody, uh, I do jujitsu. And then I also do improv and like those three things, they relate so well with each other. And so with life, you know, that it's like, I love that too about jujitsu is like the things it shows you who you are, you know, it shows me like different aspects of my life. It shows me things I don't want to look at about myself, you know, same with improv and with, you know, being in recovery. And it really teaches you to live in the moment because if you're thinking about something else, next thing, you know, somebody's on your back, you know, if you're not truly present in that moment and just letting yourself be, or if you're caught up in your emotions, because I am getting better, but I've, become a very emotional fighter like and so i'm getting better uh not as emotional as i was previously but it really like helps you you know truly be in touch with yourself and i think that's too another reason why and then yeah you get to feel in shape you get to feel strong you know like i can definitely tell when i have taken a break you know or when i'm coming off of an injury or something like that where it's like you just don't feel as good as when you're constantly going